I resist the process of thinning. It's a gardener's term for taking out some of the seedlings of a plant that are too close together because if you leave them smooshed together, is that a word? Like sardines in a can, they won't thrive. They'll produce, but not as abundantly had they had space created around them to bloom. Welcome back to Thriving Thoughts, the podcast that teaches you how to change your thoughts so you can change your life. I'm your host, Dr. Sherry. I'm in my second year of cultivating a vegetable garden. I'm already enjoying the fruits of my labor this season. Just yesterday, I ate a crisp and zippy white icicle radish less than a minute after I plucked it from the earth. I'm also growing peas, onions, leeks, mesclun, carrots, arugula, spinach, and Crenshaw melons. Yep, the harvest is gratifying and fun, and I love being able to cut fresh salad mix to enjoy for lunch. But it's only made possible by my attention to two things, weeds and too much of a good thing. Weeds are obviously problematic, right? They, much like fools, grow without water, and they can threaten to overtake the precious seeds we've planted. Ironically, you don't even have to plant weeds. They materialize out of thin air, even after the soil has been tilled twice. But the seeds for vegetables you want to grow, you've got to plant them and plant them according to exact specifications on the seed packet. Some require one quarter inch of dirt loosely placed on top or others up to an inch. You see where I'm going with this, I'm sure. Cultivating a garden is a metaphor for cultivating a thriving thought world. In my quaint neighborhood, there's a home I frequently pass when out for a walk with my hound girls, and it has a sign in the yard that quips, your mind is a garden, your thoughts are the seeds. You can either grow flowers or you can grow weeds. You're welcome for that. Isn't that fun? Weeds will grow, yes. Lies, untruths, false beliefs about ourselves, others in the world. They're going to appear without our permission. That's why it's vital to your ability to thrive that you remain vigilant, to be proactive about looking out for those lies, those thoughts that make you feel like you're just surviving or even struggling. Just as with weeds, they quite literally appear overnight. To have a thriving garden, I must spend time every day winnowing out the weeds that threaten to choke out the abundance of produce I'm intended to have. To be transparent, my spinach patch, it's not doing so well. A few sprouts have eked their way out of the dirt, but even those are being attacked by some pest. I jumped ship on the spinach. I stopped weeding, and now when I look down at that patch in the garden, there are so many weeds I wouldn't be able to tell if spinach existed among them or not. I could have spinach, but I guess it's just not that important to me because other plants are producing sufficiently. Is there an area of your thought world that you've neglected? Maybe you're thriving in your relationship and work life, but floundering in your financial life. And because it feels like you can't do anything to change it, you think you can't, and so you don't. I can thrive without spinach. You cannot thrive by neglecting how your thoughts are impacting specific areas of your life. Take stock of your spiritual, relational, emotional, financial, physical, etc. gardens. They all require your attention. In varying seasons, yes, and never all at the same time, to root out the thought weeds that threaten your vitality. I mentioned never at the same time, which leads us away from the obvious problem of weeds and into the not-so-obvious trouble with too much thriving. Hmm, is that possible, you ask? Well, you bet my little white icicle radish row it is. I'm not a pro-gardener. And I'm learning that I'm pretty heavy-handed with the seeds when it comes time for planting. My row of radishes is a shining example of my failure to practice thinning, a practice used in gardening to ensure plants have enough space to thrive. My initial resistance to thinning is that it just seems so wasteful. Why would I pluck out a plant just because it's too close to another one? I mean, more radishes are a good thing, right? Well, yeah, but not when they come at the cost of growing multiple just meh radishes over growing a quality crop of thriving ones. It's the same with thriving thoughts. You've got to make space for the truths that you plant to grow. And to do that, you must devote sufficient time to that consistent practice for the truths to take root and to grow fully. If you attempt to focus on too many truths or your thoughts related to every area of your life at the same time, you're going to crowd them out. They won't take sufficient root. They won't develop into big truths in the form of thought habits. Your thoughts require and deserve your deliberate attention. Make journaling space and real life practice space available to them so they can take root and produce a harvest of thriving. If you take on more than you have space to do, none of them will produce the fruit you long for. Start small. Start with the thought spaces that are the most important for you to fortify. Tend to them. Plant truth. Give them space to develop and always be on guard for little lies that threaten to choke them out. That's the level of intentionality required to plant, 
cultivate and harvest thriving thoughts.